Foreman, <laughs> the Jack River Gun and Press Brief. Uh, thank you for your patience and your continued coverage yeah, of this incident. Uh, you know, our highest priority is to make sure the public's informed. Uh, the purpose of this press conference is to talk about the uh, efforts that were uh, that led to the reopening of the port to commercial traffic. Uh, my understanding is also that there is there are a lot of questions about the salvage of the uh, the vessel that remains on its side. So hopefully we can shed a little bit of light as to what is going on in terms of the planning for the uh, the recovery of that vessel. That being said. In terms of microphones, does everyone hear me well? Uh, if so, I'll go ahead and give you the names of the speaker uh, and those that will be answering questions. If anybody has anything else? Perfect. So our speaker is uh, Commander Norm Witt. Uh, he is Commander United States Coast Guard Marine Safety Unit Savannah, Captain of the Port, and the Federal uh, Representative for the Incident Command. Spelling. First name, Norm, common spelling. November, Oscar, Romeo, Mike. Last name, Witt, W-I-T-T. -T. I'll leave off the fancy stuff for the rest of them. Uh, for the state, we have John Maddox. Uh, he is representing Georgia Department of Natural Resources Environmental Protection Division. John, common spelling with an H. Maddox, M-A-D-D-O-X. Cobble again. Uh, John Maddox is the state uh, representative for the Unified Command. Did I get that right, John? Correct. All right. Perfect. Perfect. Any clarification other than that? Perfect. Uh, and speaking on behalf of Gallagher Marine Systems, is Chris Graff. Chris, common spelling, Graff is G-R-A-F-F. So unless there are any questions, the way uh, this will proceed is the speaker will be uh, Commander Witt. He'll provide you a statement. Uh, we'll have everyone available to answer some questions. We are on a limited time schedule. Uh, we've got a couple operations kicking off in about 30 minutes. Uh, so to begin, if we could keep questions limited to one per person and then one follow-up, and if there's a little bit of additional time, we'll try to uh, address any additional questions that you have. Without further ado, I'm going to wait. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, so I'm going to take a couple moments just to uh, talk uh, talk briefly about, actually cover two subjects really, trying to cover, uh, give you some information on the waterways management issues, port and port operations, and then discuss a little bit about the uh, ongoing salvage operations. So for the waterways management uh, port operations piece, uh, so currently we have a safety zone in effect at the at the site uh, and that is to protect the public and the workers on site uh, right now that's a half nautical mile radius around the site and as as, uh, as things progress we're looking to shrink that safety zone uh, additionally we do have commercial vessel movements now uh, with captain of the port approval Coast Guard approval uh, we, we actually tested uh, good uh, success. We, we, we tested two outbound vessels yesterday afternoon, early evening. Uh, and so as we, as we moved those vessels out of the port, we were, we were looking at the casualty to see if there was any movement of the vessel on site. Uh, and again, positive results there. So towards that, we're looking to bring in uh, four vessels today. Those will all be inbound vessels. Uh, one of those has already successfully come in, and I believe the uh, second one is, is started inbound as we speak. Uh, plan going forward, again, we'll continue to do, uh, to have commercial vessel movements with the Coast Guard approval on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, the plan again for today is we're going to try to get four vessels inbound. Tomorrow we'll try to get three vessels inbound. Uh, since the accident, there's basically been a queue or backlog of seven vessels off, off, offshore, waiting offshore to come in. So if we can uh, successfully implement that plan of four in today and, and three in tomorrow, we'll have cleared out that backlog. And to kind of give you some context moving forward, uh, typically the, the Port of Brunswick takes, I believe, about 50 vessels in uh, per month. So roughly that's about 100. You know, if you figure each vessel is, a, is a two movements, you know, one in, one out, basically 100, 100 movements per month. Uh, so you're looking at three to four movements per day. So, you know, hopefully that will put that seven vessel uh, backlog kind of in, into some context. So definitely I, I think some good news there. You know, we're, we're certainly making progress on that front. 
Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the ongoing salvage efforts, um, keep it fairly general, and then uh, open up for some questions. So, again, uh, I've tried to stress that this is a complex case, a large vessel, close to the channel, uh, and, it, and it's important that we try to take this methodically, one step at a time. Uh, I would say that uh, currently we're still developing, obviously working with the uh, with the technical specialists, with, with Don John, uh, still developing salvage plans. Several pieces to that. One of the things that they're, we're, we're trying to do up front is, again, try to mitigate any, any pollution concerns. So towards that end, they are, they are uh, in the process, actually concluding with trying to identify and seal off, or, or bag in this case, any, any submerged fuel vents, which could be a source of of uh, pollution discharge. So currently, they have they have secured all of those vents that, that we've identified. And at this point, that's three that they successfully uh, successfully sealed off. As they move forward and to continue uh, developing the salvage plans, we're again always looking to mitigate the pollution, potential pollution threat. Thank you. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so always looking to, to try to mitigate the pollution, the pollution threat. Uh, as they move forward with those plans, they're going to be, one of the, one of the options they're going to be looking at is for, for fuel that's in tanks, uh, one option would be to try to pump those tanks off, uh, pump the pollution out as soon as possible. Some of those tanks are, are kind of towards the exterior or the skin of the ship. Uh, other tanks are more internal to the vessel. So, so that's kind of, again, part of that developing plan. In some cases, it may, it may make sense. It may be most prudent to try to pump those tanks off. In other cases, it, it actually may be uh, more prudent, both from the salvage respect and, and the pollution prevention, to try to, to, try to uh, actually just secure those in place and continue with the salvage operation. Also related to the salvage operation, they've got uh, survey boats. Uh, basically surveying the bottom contours and, and the way that there's a heavy current in this area so to try to identify to try to identify if there's any silting which could impact the uh, stability of the vessel uh, so again the plan development there is ongoing and let's see I think that pretty much wraps up what I, what I wanted to try to pass to you and uh, we'll open up for questions is there any indication that the weight distribution played a role in this or maybe the channel uh, maybe the pilot was ran aground. So that's an excellent question, ma'am. Uh, the there is an active investigation regarding the the cause of the accident. Uh, it, it is an ongoing investigation. We're actually handling that separate than the Unified Command, uh, which is which is by policy the way we do that. So I, I don't have a whole bunch of info. I don't have any information to share with you because that is actually an ongoing investigation. Thank you. How much fuel are you expected to pump out of there, or how much fuel are you expected is left in that, in that vessel? So the, the, the best information we have right now, sir, is that there is approximately 300,000 gallons of fuel, and that's uh, different types of weight of fuel oil. Um, again, how much we try to pump off is really going to be as we develop those salvage plans and refine those. Again, there, there may be some tanks, there, there probably will be some tanks that we try to pump off. There are likely going to be some tanks that we try to seal in place. Does that include fuel from the, I mean, or is that an issue, the fuel that's the from the cargo, which is all the vehicles? The uh, 300, the potential 300,000 gallons that I mentioned does not include the vehicle, sir. And to answer your question, yes, that, I mean, that is a concern as well. Probably a, a, a lower concern, but it is a concern, yes, sir. Can I just ask to clarify, so there's fuel in the cars as well? that are placed on the vessel? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then how much fuel does that account for? So that is, we can, we can try to get you a better figure on that. Uh, I don't have that right now, but, but we can try to get you a better, better figure on that. We're, some of that we're still trying to calculate. Okay. In terms of the investigation into how this happened, it appears from at least our perspective, the rudder looks like the pilot was trying to make a left turn to correct what was going on. Is there any indication of what, again, any indications whether it's pilots or mechanical, what happened at this point? Yeah, great question, sir. But again, I, I would tell you that uh, there is an ongoing investigation. 
being handled separate from the unified command uh, pollution mit mitigation piece. I can't speak to the ongoing investigation. Could you specifically say which companies are part of the salvage effort, or is it just a bunch of different ones? There's a, there's a bunch of different countries. I'm sorry, not countries, companies. Uh, Don John is the primary salver company. Could you spell that? I can get it for you offline. Uh, Gallagher Marine Systems is what we call the, the, the qualified in, individual, so they are actually actually managing the response for the for the company. And is the goal to make sure the ship stays intact as you salvage it, or is it still undetermined at this point? <coughs> I would say that at this point the goal is to keep the ship intact, yes, if I understand your question correctly. Yes, sir. Uh, what is the current containment strategy? Is it trying to contain at the source or in impacted areas, would you say? So I would say that's a multi-layered strategy, sir. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, so I talked about about plugging the, the vents. Those are obviously potential potential sources. So. Certainly, that that's an important piece. You know, as we as we learn more about the condition of the vessel, we're better able to ascertain whether some of the you know tank by tank, how how it has the structural integrity of any of those tanks been in, impacted. So so that's we're we're continuing to refine those plans as we gain information. Uh, you know, another piece of this, and there's been a lot of discussion about about boom, uh, oil oil boom. We are utilizing boom. Uh, I will say that different different uh, recovery and and recovery techniques work better in different conditions. And where this vessel is, again, I think we've discussed it a few times, but you get a pretty heavy current in there, and it's also subject to about a seven foot tidal surge, so or tidal fluctuation. So uh, those situations, those environmental factors are not conducive to the, the most conducive to effective booming strategy. We are using boom. Uh, we're actively utilizing boom, and we have boom on station. So we're, and we're using that where it, where it tactically makes sense. We also have uh, on on uh, on water recovery assets, and, and we're we're actively sending out shoreline assessment teams. We've got overflights going out. Uh, two members of the Unified Command were up in a, up in an overflight yesterday when we had one of those outbound vessels. The three of us are going up later, actually right after this. Uh, so we're we're doing everything we can to assess uh, impact. Does that answer your question? It, it does. All right, uh, thank you, sir. Any other questions? For yes, clarification, who's the lead investigator? Is it the Coast Guard? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The, the Coast Guard's the lead investigator. Uh, National Transportation Safety Board is, is, is working this as well. Yes, yes, so we'll wrap up with one more question and then just for everybody's awareness to keep us on time. I'll stay behind to give amplifying information for any questions that you may have remaining. Um, we, we've had a lot of charter fishermen get in touch with us saying that the five mile, half mile containment zone is, is problematic for them to get out north and south. Do you know when it would possibly shrink? Yeah, Roger on all, great question, sir. Uh, the, my goal is to shrink that today. We're actively working on that, and we're going to try to push that information out. Thank you. Yes, sir. And, and, and I would follow on to that. Uh, we've got contact numbers. I'll, I'll make sure you guys get them. But, again, the port is open. Uh, we just need to authorize movement. So if, if individual vessel operators, commercial vessel operators are having issues, I would I would encourage them to contact the Coast Guard, contact the Unified Command, and we'll do everything to get them underway. Any other questions? Is that it? All right. Y'all's. Uh, Thank you all.